Let's now talk about interface input, something that people find boring, although honestly, I think it's not. It's quite interesting. So when you only have one character that receives the input in the game, when you make gameplay prototype, you won't have any trouble with input handling. The problems start to arise when the game grows in complexity and when you start to have interface. That is why Godot provides multiple input callbacks that you can use and it provides all this UI system that helps you manage the flow of UI events. In this demo, I have a pop-up that can appear in the center of the screen. Then I have two buttons in the top right, and the goal here is to show you how to manage stacked menus and UI elements and things that would stack on top of the game. So first, for the UI, you can use a few callbacks. In general, you will use one called GUI input, and it works the same way as unhandled input and input, except that this one is a bit special. Uh, everything that's related to the mouse will only trigger this function if the mouse is inside the controls. You will only get mouse input when the mouse is over the button, for example or in the case of the pop-up, you will only get mouse motion events and clicks when the mouse is inside the pop-up by default, because there are a few options with that. So all control nodes, when you select them and you go to the inspector, have a mouse section that you can unfold. By default, the mouse filter is set to stop. GUI input will receive the mouse event and it will prevent them from propagating. So it will automatically accept the input events or set them as handled. Now you can change that. You can set them to pass. Pass is going to make it so even if you click on that window, the UI elements that are behind it will also receive the mouse event. And you can also use ignore to have foreground UI element and have the mouse input pass through it. All right, so let's go back to stop and go back to the code. I've used unhandled input here. If I want other UI elements to receive this input event before my accept pop-up, but I can also remove the function and make it use GUI input to go one level higher. So the hierarchy is like that. First, the input method callback is going to receive all input events. If nothing accepts an input event, then it's the GUI that's going to handle them. And finally, it's going to be unhandled input. That is why you want to use unhandled input for gameplay elements, then GUI input for most of your interface. And if you want some input to override whatever's happening, for example, if you want to create an in-game console for debugging purposes, you can use input for that or for high level game elements like the ability to pause the game wherever you are in a menu or anything by pressing the start key, you could use input for that to make sure that you always pass the game properly. Now, the reason I'm not using GUI input here is because I want to handle input on this script for another node. Okay, so this gets a little complex. GUI input works when the control node is in focus. So use GUI input on the same node you are attaching the script to. But here I'm on the top level node, a simple control node of my scene and I'm managing code for my accept dialogue here that I want to show up. Now, if I use GUI input, this will not work because this node can only receive key keyboard input through GUI input if it is in focus and base control nodes can't be in focus. Buttons, etc., can be and receive keyboard events, but not regular control nodes. Now, if I press escape, once I'm in the game, it's going to open the pop-up window. So now in this demo, let me open it to show you what's happening. I have some prints at the top here. So if I hover the buttons, you will see that I'm using the GUI input callback. And as I'm moving the mouse around the screen, unlike the underscore input function, the buttons don't get any input event. But because I'm using GUI input, I will get input callbacks and it will print to the screen 
when the mouse hovers the buttons. It not only works with the mouse, so if I click one of the button to grab focus and I navigate them with the keyboard, I'm going to receive the keys on the buttons. You can see now I'm getting input event key objects on the buttons. Now if I press escape once I'm in the game, it's going to open the pop-up window. If I move inside the window, you're going to see in the pop-up the last event is mouse motion. Now because I'm inside a pop-up, I can use tab to navigate, but you can't really manage input events with the keyboard that well on specific pop-up windows. The important part here is if I click or I hover the buttons, when a pop-up is open, it's going to catch all these mouse input events and it catches them on the entire screen. This is what Godot uses when you have some pop-up that appears to ask you to save or to confirm anything in the editor. It uses the same nodes. So this is going to block all the mouse input by default. I can't click on the buttons, but if I close my outlet window, then I can go back to my buttons, navigate and receive input event keys on them. So that is GUI inputs in a nutshell. The rule of thumb here is that you should use it by default, and if you can't make your UI work with it, then you fall back to unhandled input, or if you want the input to be cut before everything else in the game, you can use the input method. But don't use the underscore input method by default, you're not meant to use Godot that way. It's fine for small prototypes, but it's going to give you some trouble as your game scales up, like it did for me for the ARPG demo.